Okay, so now we have our little sketch here where I click outside the square, nothing happens, but I click in the square and it changes color and then I let go, it doesn't. So I kind of have like a little button that I made right here in my sketch. So my next thing I want to do is I want when I click this square, I want it to play a sound as well as change color there, okay? Now here we're going to have to make uh, some adjustments to our code because keep in mind I don't want to be having sounds play when they are inside of draw because that is just going to play it over and over because draw is always looping and it's going to be a real annoying sound so I don't want that. So I am going to make a few adjustments here as well as show you an additional method uh, that goes with the sound file objects that we can use. And that'll actually make things easier as we move forward and even want to start incorporating more than one sound into our sketches here, all right? So the first thing I need to do is I wanna load a sound file. So I've already uploaded these sound files in here. This is one I made that I sent to myself in a previous video about how to make your own samples. This is the doorbell sample, which is available on Google Classroom uh, and one we've used in previous projects. So I want two sounds here. Okay, so preload, I need that function. I need to make some variables to hold that. I'm gonna make bell and I'm gonna make train because uh, this is actually the train sound. While I'm at it here, let me show you, I'm gonna rename this whole sound file here. Okay, so instead of new recording, I'm just gonna write train. Okay, so you just right click on this or if you got a Mac, you could hold control and click on it. Okay, and then I'll do that. I think even if I click this, yes, it gives me the option, just this even arrow, I can click rename it train. So that way, when I go to uh, do my preload, I don't have to give it a whole long name like that. So I'm gonna write train equals load, lowercase l, capital S sound, open, close parentheses. And then remember in here, I need to put the exact file name, which is why I changed it to something much more easy. Uh, so in quotes, train.m4a uh, quote okay whoop did not put it inside of there so let me just switch that parenthesis okay then i'm just going to copy and paste and then just make a few quick changes here i'm going to make this bell i'm going to call that and then i need to change the name of this to doorbell.mp three right there okay so now i'm going to press play just make sure everything's working i get no error messages so i did everything correctly here, all right? So now, again, if I were to put bell.play in here, and I'll apologize in advance, but just so you can see why we don't wanna do this, I press play, okay? You see how it kinda has that sort of, uh, I'll play it again, it's sort of like a jittery. Yeah, and then especially if I hold the mouse down longer, we get that just, it keeps playing it over and over because drawn is, is in loop. So I don't wanna be handling any sound stuff inside of draw. All right, so what does that mean? I'm gonna need something else to handle that. So I'm gonna do function. Now here I'm gonna do mouse, lowercase m, and then press. So this is slightly different from this mouse is pressed. Remember, this is a Boolean variable, which tells me it's true or false. So if I'm pressing the mouse, it's true. If I'm not pressing it, it's false. This is a function, which is just when the mouse is pressed, do something, okay? So that's what's called an event. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this whole uh, conditional statement here about mouse X mouse Y and the parameters of my rectangle here. And I'm gonna put it inside this mouse pressed thing, okay? But instead of changing the fill, what I'm going to do is here put bell.play, okay? So now I have bell.play. So if I am inside of these parameters of the mouse, it will play the bell and then inside here it will also change the fill. So now I do it, I click, and I just hear one doorbell, which is what I want to do. And I could press the mouse a bunch of times. Right, and there we go. So that right there is enough. So I have that option to handle the sounds there. Now, I am gonna, for the next video, I'm gonna show you a slightly different way we could do that uh, as far as, so we don't have all these different mouse X, mouse Y things going on, especially then, because what I'm gonna do is add a separate, another rectangle 
uh, and it will get a little bit cluttered if I keep having to do this conditional statement here and here. So I'm going to show you a different method to go along with that in the next video.